Okay, ready to build the earthquake robot. First of all, we're going to get this long yellow plate. We get two of these small two module beams and put them on the sides. Next we're going to get two eight module beams. Put them on the sides here and then we're going to get a black brick. to get a square plate and attach its corners to the end here and then we get a second long yellow plate to sandwich between those parts there. Now we get two small beams with cross holes in them. Attach it like so. And then we get two green upside down wedges or slopes. Now we need the smart hub and attach it to the end here. And then we get the motor. side. Now let's put this on the side, get a four module long skinny plate and a uh, two module beam with a uh, joiner on the side. Then we put a um, two module beam with cross hole on the side and we sandwich it between another four module long skinny plate. We attach it to this motor. And now we get this long green plate, I mean beam and then put it over here. Now this is creating what's called a piston and a piston works like this. When the motor spins around you can see that this green arm is going to move back and forth. So this transfers a, um, a circular motion into a back and forth motion and that's what's going to create our earthquake vibrations. Right, now we need a six module axle. Put it through the two cross holes underneath the smart hub. And then we need an axle extender on one side. And then we'll put in a red axle. And also a rubber piece with two cross holes onto this axle. We flip it around and we do the same thing on the other side. Now what rubber does is it stops the platform here from uh, moving around on the table because it adds friction to it. Uh, whereas uh, this other side with the, uh, that's going to have the earthquake platform is going to be the one that's moving. So let's put that to the side. Let's get this uh, large flat plate and attach it to a four module plate. 
like that. Now we need two long grey plates with no studs on them. And then we put in another two module plate here. Next we get two more six module long plates and put it underneath. Then we get a second large plate, put it on the side. Then we get two more two module plates them in the center. One on the side and then a blue one with no studs. Now let's get four of these one module black studs. Flip this around and put two long plates on the bottom. Make sure that the whole platform is right in the middle. And then we need two green plates. Flip this around. Now we need to put one more blue plate here. And then we want a green two module beam here. Now for this side, we're going to add a uh, beam with an, uh, a joiner. And then on the other side, we have just a beam. And then we sandwich between that with these long grey plates with no studs. And then we make some miniature roofs with these yellow slopes. Flip it around again and then we're going to add these round black plates. Remember these are the ones that make things slippery so that they slide around with a bit less friction. Okay, Up around. Now let's add some decorations. Put in a flower right here. And then we put a reed right here. Now let's attach it to the platform. Excellent. So there we have the earthquake machine. But we're not done yet. We need to start making some buildings to test on the machine. So let's start off with a green brick. Then we add two one module bricks, I mean two module bricks, and then a black brick. And we add some slopes to make the roof. These three module long yellow pieces will do the trick. Okay, that's one little house. All right, now let's try another house. Let's get a yellow plate like this, attach it to 
a yellow brick and another yellow brick and a third yellow brick this looks like it's going to be a tall building then we're going to add two blue bricks then a black brick with two two module blue bricks and we have a longer yellow plate and a shorter yellow plate there we are this is big building now for the final building I'm going to start off with a square plane with a hole in the middle. I'm going to attach these, these tall grey slopes. Two, three, four. Add a blue brick. And then these two four by one bricks two more two module bricks on the side and a black brick in the middle and then the roof is a long yellow plate and a shorter yellow plate and there we have it. We have three buildings. One, two, three. And we have the earthquake machine to test on. So let's get to the coding and see which buildings last the longest. All right, now that we have our earthquake machine ready, it's time to do some code. Now, what we want to do is we want the machine to shake more and more violently. So the way we do it is using all the knowledge that we have learned so far about coding. We're going to start with a display block. So here we set the display to be zero. And then we're going to create a loop or a repeat block. Now we are going to increment that variable that we have by one. Now this is tricky but I will explain it afterwards. We are going to set the engine power but instead of setting it to a number we set it to whatever is on the display block and we use this little block here with the one two three. Whoops. And then we spin the motor for two counts. And then we're going to make it have a rest for one count. And I want this whole thing to loop five times. So we get a number block. And make it loop five times. So what have I got here? When I press this play block we set the display to zero and then we're going to start a loop. Inside the loop what we do is we add one to the display. So it starts off as zero and when you add one to it the variable is now one. The motor is going to set its power to whatever is on that variable and the first time it goes through the motor power is going to be 1 because it starts off at 0 and then we go into the loop we add 1 to the display and it becomes 1 so the engine power is going to be at 1 and then it's going to rotate for 2 counts and then we're going to wait for 1 count and then we're going to repeat this five times. So the second time it loops around, the variable is now at one, and we're going to increment it again. So now the variable is going to be two. 
and then the engine power is going to be set at the variable and that's going to be 2. And then it's going to spin for 2 counts and then wait for 1 count. It goes around again, we'll add another 1 to it, so now the display is 3. The engine power is going to spin at 3 and then it's going to spin for 2 counts and then wait for a count, go back again, it's going to be 4 and then 5. And that's how we make it so that we spin stronger and stronger, faster and faster. The whole idea of using this display and variable is that we can set it so that this motor will just adjust its speed and keep on getting stronger and stronger and we don't have to keep on adding code to it. Because if you think about it, the alternative is something like this. So we press play. And then if we didn't use the variables or the display block, we'd have to go, okay, let's spin the engine at one for two counts. And then we want to, to wait for one count. And then we want to, to uh, spin again but at power of 2 and then we want it to spin that for 2 counts and then we want it to wait again for another second and then we're going to spin again uh, we change the, the power to 3 and then we, <laughs> we spin that whoops well, see I'm already getting mixed up because we are writing way too much code. Okay, set it up three. Then we spin for another two counts. And then we wait for another count. And then we're going to spin at four and so forth. So as you can see, it gets really messy and a lot of things can go wrong uh, in something like this because uh, a number might be entered incorrectly or uh, I might just a reader of the wrong block and then put it in incorrectly and it's also a big waste of time because uh, all this can be simplified into something like this that loops itself. So let's try this now and see what happens to the earthquake machine.